Hi, I'm Peter Clausen from Bugs in Cyberspace. I've had my website up where I sell bugs now since 1997. Please check it out sometime if you're a YouTube subscriber and have not actually popped over to the website. I put a lot of these videos here. They might be a little easier for you to find there on the website, in fact, than just sort of randomly looking through them here on my YouTube channel. I've got two adult females, two different species of dead leaf mantises here. On the right is Deriplatus truncata with that enormous pronotum, shield-shaped area back there behind the head. And then on the left, a little bit more veinated, paler, textured. That's Deriplatus lobata. And these two mantises have never been this close to one another before, but in the moment that I put them on my hand just before I started the video, it seemed like they were tolerating each other just fine. They'll be going back into their individual cages here very momentarily. But I wanted you to see two adult females, two related and similar looking species, both in the genus Deriplatus. And put them down here again. This one back here on the lid of its tank. And today we're just gonna take a few quick looks at some different mantis species. I'm doing an interview with Wally Kern over on his YouTube channel tomorrow, Saturday. And he's going to be talking to me about mantises. And so I just wanted to share with you guys some mantises here in this video today so that the people that watch his videos could in turn come back and check out some more mantises if they decide they're interested in learning more about them. In this first video clip, I'm putting giant Asian mantises together for breeding purposes. And throughout the years of keeping so many different mantis species, so many individual mantises, thousands and thousands of them, I have a fairly unique sense for how they move and how they respond to different stimuli, I guess you could say. A lot of breeders and really uh, accomplished breeders, they will simply put the two mantises together and just sort of let them, um, let nature take its course, I guess you could say. But uh, through just decades of watching insects move, uh, arthropods in general, um, how they interact just with their environment and how they interact with each other. Um, I've really learned a lot about what I can do as a keeper to help move things along in the case of breeding, as you'll see in the first series of clips in this video. Um, we'll take a look at a few other mantis species a little bit later in the video too. I hope you guys enjoy this and please bump over to Wally Kern's YouTube channel on Saturday. I think we're doing it around 4 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Central time, if I have the time zone stuff correct there. His YouTube channel is Supreme Gecko. And I'll put a link to that down here in this caption, this description area here of my YouTube video. And actually, I'll put one of these cards up here, over here. This is where the cards go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, uh, thank you guys for watching. I really enjoy making these videos for you guys. And we have a lot of fun every time. Just put these two giant Asian mantises together and even the vibrations in my voice are causing just enough of a distraction, I think, for this male. You see his abdomen wiggling there a bit. There. Looks like a pretty successful mounting. 
She was eating a roach and the male, you see his antennae vibrating there, just kind of feeling things out, making sure that he didn't make the wrong move. You can see that she continues to feed there on the roach, a very good sign. And he's in a pretty good position at the moment, considering she's not responding negatively to his advances. And I think this is going to go very well. I have this tank here on flat surface there on the bottom of the cage. And in order to make this a little bit easier on them, I'm going to, in just a moment, turn the cage on its side so that he can more easily maneuver himself and connect the tip of his abdomen down and around and under her wings to the tip of her abdomen. Just waiting for him to position himself just a little bit more. Come in here for sort of a side angle. She's sort of positioned here in a corner of the tank and it's not ideal in terms of me turning it, but I think I'm going to make that move now. And this will sort of lift her abdomen a little bit, hopefully. She will often reposition herself too when I turn the tank. Her legs are pretty extended at this point, and so she will hopefully reposition them a little bit, bending them a bit to lift her abdomen off the wall of the cage there and allowing the male easier access to connecting up with her. And once he's in the right position, which in this case means moving forward just a little bit, and you can see his front walking leg sort of creeping forward there as he slowly positions himself in place, a back leg now, and he will want to be further up there around her thorax back there behind her raptorial forearms, a little bit higher up. And then so that the tip of his abdomen is lined up more closely with the tip of her abdomen. You can see now that he's extended quite a bit beyond her. And so I'm going to Maybe, well, he's creeping forward just a little bit still. I get a little impatient sometimes, and particularly when I'm filming, because I want to advance the process for you guys so that you can sort of see rather quickly what's happening and how the play-by-play -play goes. Um, he's having a little bit of trouble, I can tell by the way his legs are moving back and forth and positioning himself in the way he wants. And so I'm going to turn the cage one more time because she didn't reposition herself. And because she's still feeding, I'm not so worried about her reacting negatively to what I'm about to do here. So here we go. One more turn. And now her very heavy abdomen Her very heavy abdomen will cause her legs to bend a little bit and be outstretched and also allow him to position himself a little bit better. If I leave the camera running here, you will see at some point there his antennae are still communicating there, gathering information about the situation, vibrating intensely, always a good sign of an interested male and he will move up what looks like her neck there, her thorax, and uh, reposition himself so that he can line up his abdomen with hers. And we'll take a small break here and come back when things are starting to happen. Well, I say that, but then I come up with another idea here. I'm going to blow on him very gently, and that sometimes emboldens him because he knows that 
the female will be slightly distracted by it as well. See that he moved ever so slightly forward. And you can also see at this point that his abdomen is beginning to wrap around hers and he is attempting to, and this isn't the best angle for me to be at here, but wrap around the tip of his, touching the tip of hers, and then when everything is lined up properly, he will insert it into her. You can see that the tip of his is just there, touching the tip of hers. I can zoom in just a little bit here. The lighting isn't great, and so the picture quality will be a little lacking, but um, this definitely at this point has all of the marks of a successful pairing, and that means another egg case. I also have another pair going in here. Got a male up here in the corner and another female down here feeding on a roach. And then recently, this female, I mated her about a month ago, and a couple days ago, she deposited that enormous egg case there. And hopefully in a month or so, we'll see a lot of babies being produced. Hiridula membranacea, the giant Asian mantis. That this shadow mantis here, related to a ghost mantis, it's feeding on a cockroach, and it recently deposited this egg case right there on the side wall of the tank. You can actually see the individual eggs within the case there laid in about four rows, two on each side of the midline, I guess you could say. And you could even count them if you wanted to, to see how many would hatch from it. Over here, we have another shadow mantis feeding on a roach, and it deposited this egg case over here, November 28th. And then here, between the two of them, we have a ghost mantis, Phylocrania paradoxa. I was told these other ones, when they were sold to me as very young nymphs, captive bred here in the US, that they were Phylocrania illudens. And they do seem a bit larger than the ghosts, although the photos of them look a little different online sometimes from keeper to keeper for that species. And then this smaller ghost mantis here, paler. Sometimes they are darker though. And there is some speculation that the Phylocrania illudens are also really just Phylocrania paradoxa. And that science is going to figure that out. I'm rocking this mantis and its prey here slightly. It emboldens the mantis to move a little bit closer to its prey. Not the clearest shot you've ever had, but sort of an older deli cup, I guess. These are Caribbean deadleaf mantises, and I don't think their wings molted properly, and so they look a little bit odd here. I fed them all roaches, and you can see this one over here. It definitely had some molting issues there, but it's not life-threatening, merely cosmetic. Their wings here are vestigial anyway. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.